Hi folks, welcome back. And as always, thank you so much for joining. So today we're going to learn about the candle wick. Now the wick system of a candle is of critical importance uh, in terms of safety, um, second only to the glass or the container or the containment system that you're going to use to control the amount of fuel that is delivered to the flame. All right, so we've got a lot of ground to cover, and this is going to be an extensive look into the candle wick as a system, as part of the candle system itself. And we're going to explore how the wick works, its function, as far as a fuel delivery system to the flame. And then we're going to look more closely at how to optimize your wick for your chosen wax. And we're going to look further into simplifying the selection because it's extensive and it's confusing and um, it would be even confusing to me with many years in the business. And I've developed a way how to simplify the selection. So that's what we're going to do. Now, in the end, we're even going to make our own candle wicks and we're going to chemically treat those to improve its burn characteristics. So a lot of ground to cover. So let's get started. So let's begin with how the wick works, what its function is in the candle system itself. Now, quite simply put, the wick is the fuel delivery system to the flame. And the way it works is something called capillary action. Now we're going to discuss how capillary action does its thing. In the flame itself, we have a gas, and that is a lot of uh, excited uh, electrons. Um, the energy is being converted into heat, and what the flame does is it melts the wax in the fuel body itself, okay? So then the capillary flow begins. Now, how that is functioning is something simple called hydraulic pressure or the difference in hydraulic pressure between the viscosity near the flame and the viscosity near the melted pool. So due to energy or energetic attraction where the energy is being converted into heat, we're pulling the higher viscosity liquid up the wick where it can be energized as well in the flame. All right, so now we're going to begin our wick selection process. And we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to optimize the rate at which the fuel is delivered to the flame. And now um, when you start thinking about wicks, uh, the selection is huge and it's confusing. And we can spend a lot of time on which type of wick, what size. But uh, what I like to do is I like to simplify that process. Now the simplified process is what I use to gain understanding as to where I need to be in terms of a, of a wick before I purchase it. And what I like to do is simplify the selection process by using a simple flat braid wick. Now this is going to give me two bits of data that are very important as we continue this. It's going to, I'm going to look at the yield and I'll explain that soon and the consumption. And of course, I'm going to explain why that is important as well. All right. So now the reason I choose the flat braid wick is because it is most predictable and it goes up very incrementally so that it will help me choose the range that I need to be in terms of the wick yield and consumption for my chosen wax. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at braided wicks and I'm going to include in the description some links that are going to show you on a chart how to size your wicks. All right, so if you're looking at the charts that I've supplied, you will see um, 
the uh, braided plied wicks, they go up in uh, cotton counts of three. In other words, there's a nine, a 12, a 15, and so on up to, I think, uh, 60. And the other chart also gives you an indication of uh, two very important factors that we use to determine our wicks. Okay, the yield and the consumption. And we're going to go over this just a little bit more because this is critical. Now, this will also include at the end in the second segment um, a way to really get into the wick selection process and we can actually, we can make our own. And I'm going to show you how to make two different types. Uh, the second type will be for the very thick viscous waxes such as beeswax. And we're even going to include a way to chemically treat our raw material that we're going to make our wicks from so that we can enhance its burn properties. Okay, so let's talk about the charts just a little bit more. So if you're looking at the chart uh, that I've supplied a link to in the description, you will see uh, a couple of different companies and uh, Atkinson's and Pierce. Now, uh, they've been around a long time. Uh, they actually uh, developed the testing process for candles that are used in many independent testing labs and their test process is something that I have used many years myself. Now if you will go to the link where it says Classic Wick, you will click that and this will bring you to a chart where they have their applied wicks and information on the yield and the rate of consumption. Are you seeing those? Okay, now in general terms, four grams per hour is your maximum rate of consumption for most wicks. Now, their chart is indicative of a straight cut paraffin wax that they have used and they have simply given that information in a raw form for you. Now, the reason we would want to use larger wicks above the four grams per hour window that we want is as I had mentioned before, some wicks or some waxes are more viscous, more difficult to draw, and depending on colors and scents and the type of container that you're using, well, this information will vary. But as you can see from the chart, it's simple, it's predictable, and this will help you optimize your wick for your candle system. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on into the part. This is the fun part for me. I like to make my own wick, and I'm going to show you folks how to do it. Now, for those of you that are not so adventurous, well, the chart that you're seeing, well, these wicks are available for purchase from many different candle suppliers. So uh, you just go there. You have the information that you need and you buy yourself a predictable range of wicks and you begin testing. All right. And for those who enjoy the science and the craft of candle making, we're going to make our own wick that we can use in testing our candles. And what I have here is a two pound spool of cotton yarn that I have purchased online and I will include the link to them in the descriptions below. And the size that I have purchased is, if we can see this, a 10 to organic cotton. Now the 10 slash 2 is what we're going to talk about. The 10 relates to the size of the yarn itself, where the, the larger the number, the smaller diameter of the yarn itself. Now when we make cotton yarn, it is spun and by twisting it into a yarn. What ha can happen is when we twist it like that, we'll put it on a spool like this and when we cut it, it will unspin just a little bit and that's called the life of the yarn. So a single ply has more life 
than a two ply. What we do in a two ply is we take two single ply yarns and we twist them again in the opposite direction. And what that does is it balances out the twist so that when we cut a section of the yarn, it stays relaxed, it's balanced, it has no life. And this is advantageous to us as we're trying to make our own wicks because we simply don't want all the yarn moving around on us a little bit. So what I have here is something that I have constructed to help me make my own wicks with a three braid. And I will do a little bit of that here, but I've also included in the links a very short two minute video from a very nice fella who has explained it much better than I can and I urge you to watch that. It wasn't exactly covered in that little uh, video that I put in the links for you is that while you're braiding of course uh, by hand you're getting roughly two or three crossovers or braids per inch and uh, that's not a lot for a candle wick. Uh, so what I like to do is every now and then I like to, to tie back my braids, my strings are right back here with a little bit of tension and I like to push my crossovers up the wick until I get roughly 10 to 12 braids per inch and that makes a, uh, a very predictable uh, braid per inch rate for uh, testing purposes trick to do that is to come back a little bit where you see a crossover and just place a little pin in there and push it up and go back and grab the next crossover and push it up and repeat until you've pushed all your picks up nice and tight very simple, just like that. And then you can go back to braiding again and occasionally push your picks up the wick and you can make a very nice uh, predictable wick. Now, if you enjoy, say, beading or uh, macrame, something like that, knitting, this would be a very pleasant uh, relax relaxation task for you to do. And just push them up. Uh, the plied wick and I have already set up here uh, the next type of wick that I was going to show you and uh, let's very quickly just uh, look at the whiteboard to see where we're at and uh, you'll be able to see better the difference between the two wicks that I have made finished up is the ply wick and here is the uh, weaving pattern for it just as a visual illustration. It looks something like that. I've used three yarns. Now I'm going to make this. This is, uh, I, I, I dub it the Visco style. Uh, what it is, it is a um, an assimilation of something called a viscosity meter where uh, it's just two prongs and then when you dip it in a liquid, that liquid will naturally find an equilibrium somewhere along these two poles of the meter. The visco wick is essentially something similar to that where a wax proposes to sit somewhere along this um, gap right here and we simply hold it together with some threads. It will be six yarns and uh, in terms of yield it will be twice as large. But, uh, what I have here is I've got the two bundles here side by side under tension on my little frame right here and I have um, one yarn on the left and on the right attached to a uh, very high-tech coffee stirrers used for shuttles and you simply cross them back and forth Okay, one under, one under, one, under, one over. Uh, just establish a pattern that you'd like and stick with that. Doesn't matter where you start.
pull your crossovers together and space them again 10 to 12 braids per inch and there we have that and I'm going to continue right on down all right so there we have it um, the the scoop on wicks and even how to uh, make your own now uh, for expedience I've uh, decided to um, not do the uh, flame retardant segment now uh, uh, that's a subject that needs more in depth and attack on at the end of a video so and consequently uh, flame retardants are going to get moved to the end of the series we're going to keep on moving on uh, the fun stuff like scents and colors and uh, I want to thank you for watching if you found value in the content that we present here well you can find more like it if you click that little green ball all right thanks again for joining bye bye